It struck like a thunderbolt, but the High Court of Kenya is proving to be a cul-de-sac for what constitutional enthusiasts are describing as executive misadventure. The post of Chief Administrative Secretary, or CAS, went up in flames as judges turned the now familiar incinerator with a strict interpretation of constitutional provisions on, among other things, what a cabinet constitutes and what it does not. And with the stroke of a pen, President William Ruto's 10-month administration took its first major constitutional blow. CAS now picks the number right behind BBI as executive adventures gone wrong. But hang on, there is an appeal and also that discussion. And just how many trees are we going to plant and how many are we going to harvest? Conservation is going mathematical as President Ruto's administration swings between planting trees and cutting trees at the same time. We head to the forests in search of interpretations to the mixed signals being received from various government policy pronouncement. My take tonight also goes on an interpretation tour to understand the difference between digital in English and digital in Kiswahili. And hopefully we will end up with some digital identity. Sam Sense will be trying to make sense of the numbers at the Salaries and Remuneration Commission where salaries are going up from one end and down on the other. Jamila's memo returns to the roadside market of Londiani where a tragedy claimed over 50 lives and wonders, could that be just the beginning? And on Kaikai's Kai kicker tonight, it's a solemn memorandum to the country's last line of defence. This is NewsGang. That the current Office of Chief Administrative Secretary created by the first and fifth respondents and contained in the Kenya Gazette special issue number 12432 dated 12th of October 2022 and which announced the vacancies thereof is unconstitutional. B. That whereas there was some reasonable public participation on the first complement of 23 chief administrative secretaries there was no such participation regarding the additional complement of 27 office holders. C, that the entire complement of 50 chief administrative secretaries, which is to say all the second to the 51st interested parties is unconstitutional. D, for the avoidance of doubt, the notification by the first respondent dated the 16th of March 2023, appointing the second to 51st interested parties to the Office of Chief Administrative Secretary is hereby quashed. All right, lady and gentlemen, and so it was very interesting week in the courts. It's been busy. Those are the final orders in the judgment of the three judges of the High Court in the case regarding the appointment of chief administrative secretaries. Uh, now, an interesting one. Like we said at the beginning, it was, um, you know, the idea of telling the executive, wait, hold up a minute, you know, some exerting some breaks on that. Um, Linus, perhaps to begin with you to just, um, you know, set this in context and what a culmination of that. And after 10 months, here we are. And on an issue of CASs again. Yes, and it's been an issue that uh, has been um, dominating the debate out there, both the legal and political de debate. Because let us remember that it did not start with the administration of President William Ruto. It started way back with the administration of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta. Because the question was, uh, this is that position really constitutional? 
And remember the first judgment that actually came mm -hmm. against this uh, uh, position was that of uh, uh, Justice Mrima, uh, who, who had uh, uh, ruled that you know, it, it's not uh, uh, constitutional. And then the matter went to, to, to appeal. And that was during the Uhuru Kenyatta administration. And then comes this uh, matter again, taken to court, and um, uh, uh, culminating in the decision that was uh, taken, taken early this week. And very interesting, a split decision, uh, three judges, two um, mm -hmm. uh, 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 constituting the majority, saying this is unconstitutional. And um, for the first time, I think since the matter now started going to court, there is some direction um, in, in at least as far as the, the, the high court is, is, is concerned. And, and that's why the focus now will shift to uh, the court of appeal, uh, where the parties that have lost the, the case have indicated their, decision, their desire to actually pursue mm -hmm. um, uh, an, an appeal and see if they can overturn the decision of the, of the High Court. Yeah, and, and for the record, there is now, um, we received a notice of appeal from the Office of the Attorney General earlier this week on Tuesday, and just this evening, another notice of appeal, this time by uh, Dennis Situmbi, who was one of the um, nominated and appointed uh, Chief Administrative Secretary. So we see, you know, what happens. Of course, they're waiting for the written judgment, which I understand may be out already, and then they will now uh, base it on that. Uh, you know, before we move forward, it's, it's the whole issue of this has been in court, uh, you know, not once, but twice. I want us to listen to Justice Kanye on just what the Constitution intended um, as far as uh, the CAS positions. Let's listen, then we can come back and talk some more. Our considered view that the creation of a similar office to the assistant minister, now in name of CASS, cannot be created in the manner the first respondent and the fifth respondent proceeded. Based on the reasoning set out above, we do not think that it was the intention of the framers of the Constitution to have 50 CASS deputizing 22 cabinet secretaries. And so in that statement, it's tracing the history of, um, of our constitution making, um, deciding what the numbers would be, deciding what the structure of, of, of cabinet and the executive would be. Um, and, and Jamila, we moved away from assistant ministers, which yes. is you know, what we had before uh, the 2010 constitution. Yes, uh, before the 2010 constitution, there was the minister and there was the assistant minister. And I think during the... the the promulgation and during the, the whole process of writing the new constitution, the need for an assistant minister really was not seen mm. because you have a minister and you have a PS who, vis who are running the ministries. The chief accounting officer. Chief yeah. accounting yeah. officer. And if you look at even the way the situation is now, Yvonne, we've had a government in office for almost 10 months with CSs and PSs running the show. And there has been no gap, sincerely. If you look at how um, things have been running in the ministries, we have policies, we have launches, we have budgets, we have this and that going on. And, and the, that gap, there was no gap really that needed to be, to be filled. And the CAS office really was um, created to reward political cronies, first by Uhuru Kenyatta uh, after the 2017 elections, and of course, William Ruto after the 2022 elections. But when the judges were speaking uh, in the court, they said... Uh, Remember, we've talked about this not being the first time that this went to court. Mm -hmm. uh, it also went to court during uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's time. The judges said, although the Court of Appeal preserved the original office created by former President Uhuru Kenyatta in January 2018, once the office was abolished by the Public Service Commission in September 21st, 2022, the newly created office and complement of 23 office holders could no longer benefit from that suspension. Remember, Yvonne, during that time, there were 23. Now mm -hmm. we have 50 or 27 more. And one of the issues that did come up in court was the public participation. Maoni Awananchi, it's Gitukus pet peeve. Mm. It talks yes. about public participation right. a lot. And um, public participation comes up again in court um, for the second time mm. as a, a huge factor in the decision. Over the very same position. Over the very same position. <laughs> Remember with BBI mm. and President Huru Kenyatta, mm -hmm. public participation was an mm -hmm. issue. Now with this it is, even though the, doc the judges had a split decision in terms of uh, public participation for the 23, yeah, versus for the, for, additional the, for, the, for the additional 27. But because the newly created office and the fresh complement of 50 had to comply with the constitution, 
all 50 of them were declared unconstitutional, mm. no matter what you thought about the 23 or the That's 27. Right. But the question I would like to ask is, does this mean that the president or the appointing authority can appoint the 23 because public participation seems to have been done for, for those? The, yeah. Or what does this mean by law? But even as it stands, CAS office is unconstitutional. And for a second time, uh, you know, as, as we know, you know, we should have known Okay, so two things. How did we get here a second time, right? Uh, perhaps you can take us through um, the first time around in the courts. Um, so, you know, what happened then? And shouldn't this have been then easy to, uh, to understand if the courts had declared it unconstitutional? But I do recall they allowed them to continue, uh, you know, in office. But essentially, that position, that office was declared unconstitutional in a previous case, right, Sam? Right, and you recall that um, I think it was in the month, 8th of January or February 2018, when President Kenyatta was constituting his second uh, mm -hmm. administration. Mm -hmm. um, after naming the cabinet secretaries, he also named people to the positions of chief administrative secretaries. And around 2020, if I'm not mistaken about the year, he named uh, some other set of CSs. Mm -hmm. Remember the likes of... Uh, um, this gentleman, uh, CAS in the Ministry of Manufacturing, Oceani, David, yes, David Oceani. that's right, yeah. And also uh, mm -hmm. Elagi, Beatrice yes. Elagi, they were appointed mm -hmm. at that time. And then someone went to court and was challenging two issues. First, there was the question of uh, cabinet secretaries who served in the first term of President Kenyatta, and they also continue to serve in the second term without going through parliamentary vetting. Uh -huh. And then there was the second part of chief administrative secretaries, which was being challenged to being unconstitutional. So Justice Anthony Murima found and said that, um, yes, you raise substantive grounds and actually a cabinet secretary must be vetted at every nomination uh -huh. before they can be appointed, meaning likes of cabinet secretary Fred Matiangi for interior should have been vetted afresh. But they also said um, for the CASs, this is a position that should be created through public participation. Mm -hmm. The Public Service Commission, Commission. has to do it and mm. recommend to the president that uh, thereafter that can be done. But they also have to be vetted by parliament, which mm. was not done. But Justice Marima, of course, uh, because of the situation that the country was in, saying that uh, there is a situation with COVID-19, but also even at the start of the hearing, the, he did not stop them from continuing to work, bearing in mind that they, were, they would have been prejudiced. Mm. Um, and so... Even after the ruling, he said, after the judgment, he said that they will continue to serve, but that has to be regularized. Uh -huh. Of course, the Attorney General at that time went ahead and appealed against that decision, uh, got stay orders from uh, the Court of Appeal on some of those provisions, and that is sort of what gave those positions lifeline to the extent that they served until the end of time or the end of term. term. Yeah. Um, so now, the judges this time were saying that the moment Public Service Commission received a letter from that time, Secretary to the mm -hmm. Cabinet and Head of Public Service, uh, Joseph Kenya, uh, to create those positions, and they went ahead to advertise for public participation. By doing that, it meant that they have already abolished those positions of CSS under President Kenyatta. And therefore, whatever they did had to comply with the judgment of Anthony Murima. Mm -hmm. And even though they are saying that there is an appeal at the Court of Appeal, they were implementing the decision of Anthony Murima. Uh -huh. And maybe we should listen to Justice uh, Ongudi because she spoke about her dissenting opinion, specifically turning, uh, touching on the issue of 23 CASs. Okay, well, all right, we'll, we'll get that clip shortly, but she was specifically talking about, um, in her opinion, the 23 positions were constitutional for the simple reason that there was public participation held on them. But the other two judges said, no, we do not agree. The entire, yes, yes 50. But, but, but there's something they didn't get into, the nitty gritties of it, because remember we're looking at the Public Service Commission um, letter written to the executive that was saying that you've cleared the creation of 23 positions, but there was feedback that was received from the members of the public, 58% mm. of the views were saying that we do not agree mm -hmm. that uh, this position should be um, created. But then the Public Service Commission went ahead to argue it out and say, they said this because they did not understand, because they thought this is uh, 
a new position, attracting a new budget, but there was already a budget for it. So then they didn't go into the nitty gritties. What should matter from the public participation? Do the percentages matter, or it is the mere exercise of public participation that really carries the day? And even as we move ahead, because there are those appeals that have been taken to court, I was speaking to the Senator of Bomet, that is Wakili Hillary again. He was saying that they're appealing the entire decision because they want to keep the 50 positions. But also part of the grounds is that at least one judge out of the three mm. feels that the 23 positions should be constitutional. Yeah. Uh, so as they hope to get all the 50 back, they're also hoping at least, at least 23 should they can come get back. Something. But that's going to be a very difficult thing because if you're the president and maybe the Court of Appeal will say that 23 are constitutional, <laughs> how do you pick 23 from 50? In yeah, fact, what just Gituko yeah. was talking about um, the public participation that the PAC did. Yeah. I, I, I'm just seeing the numbers. PAC received about 498 views, mm -hmm. 100 of, uh, with 108 seeking for appointments. 161 were for the support of the establishment of the CAS office and more than 200 views were against it because they considered it a duplication of roles mm. played by the PSs and would lead to bloated wage bill or wastage of resources. But that was uh, ignored, Gituku, yeah. and, and uh, some very w weird reasons given as to why the minority won. The, the curious thing for me is, um, you know, we keep harping on about public participation. And then when the public does speak, what happens is you interpret it into your own understanding or in fact then say, yes, uh, the majority said they did not want the seat, they did not see the need for it. And for the Public Service Commission to then turn it on its head and say, well, the reason they said that is because they didn't understand that. It's, it's, you see a constant thread in this country of rubbishing, ignoring, and in some ways diminishing the views of the public they know what they want. They are taxpayers. They don't have to have a PhD level of, of understanding of public service matters. They are the employers. And as an employer, if you decide you do not want this post or the other, then, you know, that is what should carry the day. Um, and again, goes to whether this exercise of public participation is rubber stamping. You cannot then go back and reinterpret what the Public Service Commission could have done is gone back to the majority who said they did not want the position and ask them why and seek their level of understanding rather than um, to come and interpret it and say, well, you know, they didn't want it, but it's because they don't understand. And it's sort of the same similar thread you saw with the Finance Act, um, where people were expressing their views and then, you know, it's, but you don't understand economic matters and, you know, budgeting and finance. Um, so that just stands out for me uh, in, in that respect. But I think one of the other things that then, um, you know, goes into it. So public participation is one thing. Is that being considered? But another important thing, perhaps, is advice, legal advice that perhaps well, if you don't think the public knows exactly what they're saying or perhaps they don't understand why they're saying what they're saying, surely there must be somebody that you trust, someone whose advice that uh, would carry the day. And that would be legal advice, right, from someone like uh, the Attorney General who is, whose primary role is the chief legal advisor to government. Um, and so, Linus, the question becomes, where is that office um, in all of these? And by the way, even when we related to before with the BBI, you know, on such big matters that weigh on the constitution, that weigh on the law, um, where is the voice of that very key office uh, in matters like this? I think you are talking of the office of the attorney general mm. as the chief legal advisor of the government. He's supposed to advise the president and advise government yeah. on uh, legal uh, situations, including one like this one around the appointments of officers. There is one former attorney general in this country uh, who it said, told his boss, always told his boss, this is what the law says, but what do you want? <laughs> yeah. so, so that after that then they can proceed and, and find a way to work around, around, around the law. I think when you look at the history of our country, and, and even other countries, you'll always find that politicians go on a fishing expedition. They try and push the limits of the laws. They try and push the limits of the constitution. They test it. Remember, if there were no petitioners to go to court and say, oh, we have a problem with the appointment of CSS, CSS would actually be sworn in and they'll start uh, 
uh, working in office because even though we have the High Court as the custodian of our constitution, it can't invite itself and mm. say, hey, come here guys, how did you get appointed? Mm -hmm. People must argue in court and that's the role of the, of, of the petitioners. And look at what the court did this time. Just like it did with the BBI case, it took everyone to, especially the politicians and the parties to this case, to a study tour of the constitution. Uh, the government in particular mm. was given a lesson on Article 152 mm -hmm. on what constitutes a cabinet. Uh, yeah. you, you are told uh, who is in the cabinet. The cabinet constitutes... How the, many? The, how, many oh, how, yeah. uh, how many in terms of number mm. and who in terms mm -hmm. of titles. Mm. There is the president, there is the deputy president, mm -hmm. and then there they are not more than 22, 22 cabinet and not secretaries. less than 14 50, yes. uh, cabinet secretaries. Mm. And, uh, and so in, 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 in going to Article 152, what the judges immediately then did was to question, hey, you have the permanent secretary, uh, sorry, principal secretary office. Which other office is this that you are inserting in between offices that are properly established uh, by law? And so when it failed to meet any legal definition, the position of chief administrative secretary uh, uh, was dead on arrival, uh, at least in the eyes of, of the high court judges. There was, there was no way of, of, of fitting it into, into the, 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 the structures because you have PSs, that is principal secretaries, and you have cabinet secretaries. And remember, uh, Justice Kanye at some point even went to uh, titles of seniority, which one is mm -hmm. uh, 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 senior. I think we do have that uh, yes. uh, soundbite. Maybe we can just listen to Justice Kanye Kimondo on, uh, on, on, on these positions. The CAS is, uh, for all purposes, assistant cabinet secretaries reporting directly to the ACS. The PS is relegated to the position where he reports to the CAS and the CS. Doubt is completely removed by their job description in Gazette Notice Number 12432 of 12 October 2022 and duties specified therein. And the fact the CAS will be in a higher job group, CSG3, than the PS. And there is the anomaly. Mm. Uh, they are senior than the peers. They are uh, uh, presumably junior than the CS. CS. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a very, very interesting but situation. But also, also, Linus, what was interesting they raised is that the CS is vetted by Parliament, the PS is vetted by Parliament, but this position in the middle was not vetted by Parliament. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so with, with all these things combined, um, including the absurdity of having 50 deputizing mm -hmm. 22, 22. Mm. um i mean and, and and this i think is always said of 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 the law and, and judges and magistrates yeah they are part of society they know things they so d don't assume they're going to open some pages and find magic that can fit uh, your your wishes uh, they, they can question why why should 50 um, mm. uh, deputize uh, 22. Because in and some ministries, there was yes. two, three uh, CASs for one CS. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that yeah. was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was very interesting because I think there was some justification that they're now going to be attached to state departments uh -huh. as opposed to yeah. uh, as opposed to, to ministries. And look at how they also touched to uh, on, on the transition from the old constitution to, to the current one. Mm. This is a clear reference to the uh, hangover that we see mm. uh, uh, in government. And this had not started with the Ruto administration. It started way back with the Kibaki administration, which uh, um, after transitioning to the new constitution in 2010, uh, still retained the provincial administration uh, except by name, uh, you know, yeah. where we now yes. started having yeah. uh, regional commissioners instead of provincial commissioners, which is really um, an indirect way of retaining uh, the, the old. So um, when, when the judges referred to, the, to this, when Justice Kanye went to, uh, to that, he was clearly referring to a pattern that we have seen 
not just in this current administration, but mm. in the last three that have operated under this new constitution. And, yeah. and Yvonne, on the same, uh, about the previous administration and listening to advice from the Attorney General, uh, we do remember that during the previous administration, the government did lose quite a number of cases. A lot of judgments went against them. And questions were raised about, wait up, and isn't the Attorney General giving uh, appropriate legal advice, mm. or is it a case of him giving advice and not being listened to, or is this uh, a case of the AG trying to uh, look at the legal aspects of it and, and the political aspects of everything? Because, look, we talk about the BBI case, where the Court of Appeal, uh, the seven judge belt, uh, said that this BBI is illegal, and they gave all these directives. And then, in April 20th, uh, the High Court ruled that the Office of Chief Administrative Secretary was unconstitutional. That was then. And then we go again to June 9th, uh, during the previous administration, I think 2021, the High Court making another landmark ruling where it quashes the executive order issued by the then president, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, reorganizing the government and placing independent institutions under the control of the AG and cabinet secretaries. Mm. And then on June 18th, 2020, the High Court had declared the deed of transfer of functions executed between the national government and the Nairobi City County government as vague and irregular. So like, hey, hold up. So is, 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 is it, was it a case of the government um, not going to court prepared? Was it a case of the Attorney General um, not, his advice not being listened to when all these um, decisions were being made or these announcements being made about the creation of this or that? Or is it a case of just that the law was not being followed, mm -hmm. that such decisions were, 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 were being taken against uh, the, the President and the government at the time? And this ruling um, against Cass is actually the first uh, for President William Ruto. Um, in the courts, a yeah. big blow really mm. uh, to him uh, as he enters his 10th month, you know? Yes, but they do intend to appeal that decision. And uh, of course, uh, there's, we're seeing a spirit of defense uh, from, in fact, some of those who were appointed as CSs. Uh, let's listen to them now because, you know, the next step is now um, appealing this, perhaps um, asking for a stay uh, of the judgment that was uh, put out this week. Um, I'd like us to listen to uh, Beatrice Elachi, who is now an elected uh, leader, but who was a chief administrative secretary in the previous administration, uh, Josh Mangi as well. I mean, naturally, they didn't receive uh, the judgment uh, quite well. Let's listen. Money is not the issue. The issue is process. Does the president have power in terms of informal and formal? Yes. Informal is the executive orders. Do we follow through our constitution? What, what do you mean informal? There, there, is there is formal. There is formal that is in the constitution, sir. Okay. Yeah. There is informal that the executive orders. Those are informal powers that the president have, and that is why he gives executive orders. And we must accept that when we look at the United States Constitution, which we borrowed so heavily from, mm. then it is time most of us, because we, we end up lo following through, and then when it doesn't suit us, we come into a hybrid. If we really felt the United States, we have uh, 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 an executive presidential system, then there are some, so many things that the president can use this informal executive order to bring in clarity if he wants, or to even bring in issues that become law. And you can't question because this is an executive order and it is there. This is the most bizarre judgment I've ever seen in my 33 years as a lawyer. This court sat on its own judgment. It kept on relying on the Murima case, which was withdrawn. And the record is there that the mother was withdrawn. Why they chose to rely on the Mluma case when they knew the case was withdrawn is a bit logic. Sisi ni wakanya kama wale wengine. Sisi pia tunahaki ya kushiriki katika mambo ya kitaifa. Tutakwenda katika mahakama ya rufa. Na tunahuakika. We are very convinced that we will be successful. Because there is no way you can say that 23 are lawful and the others are saying 50 are constitutional. There is no way you can say that... Uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, who had 41 CASs, was right, but President Ruto, who had 50, was wrong. Uh, well, um, we shall see what happens during the appeals case. But listen, uh, that issue that we have been talking about around the table about um, the legal advice. So 
maybe it's the quality of advice, or maybe it is advice that is given and ignored, or maybe there is no advice that's given at all. Look, it's not just been an issue with the CAS issue, with the BBI issue at the time. It's also now with the issue of um, yet another matter that is coming up in the courts, particularly now um, challenging decisions that have been made by this administration, and that is of um, the decision to allow what are known as strangers in cabinet. So we saw um, advisors who uh, took the oath of secrecy to be able to sit in cabinet meetings, advisor on gender, advisor on security, and also a political party leader. Now that again is something that is going to court. And once again, the question of the advice that is being received. And now there are some people claiming that in fact, on the issue of strangers in cabinet, that there was advice that was given to the president advising against having them sit in cabinet. This is a claim that is being made by the president of the Law Society of Kenya, Eric Theory. Listen. Where the Attorney General in December gave an advisory uh, against this move that has been done. So it's, it's a question of government being given advice but refusing to heed the advice for political considerations. That's a serious one, isn't it, Sam? Oh yes, it is. Yeah, very. Is that, this was said. He said this to you on yes, daybreak. Yes, he, yeah. he spoke on daybreak on, on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. And I asked him if he has seen a copy of the mm -hmm. advisory, and he said it was sent to the president. He is in the legal ecosystem, and he knows what he's talking about. I don't know if it is true, mm. uh, but I would imagine um, for him to state such a thing he must know what it means because... He, of all people, should know what that means. I mean, he's the Being a lawyer and is a president, president of the of lawyers. lawyers. Yes, yeah. And just slightly to take you back to what advocate Josh Mangi is saying, mm. that um, a judgment was withdrawn or a decision was withdrawn. You cannot withdraw a judgment. I don't think that's how it works. I am not a lawyer, but I don't think that's how it works because yeah. what happened to the Justice Bremer decision is that um, the Attorney General at that time, Paul Kihara Karaoke, went to the Court of Appeal and there was um, some stay orders so that um, even though Justice Murima had said that they continue to serve, but uh, there has to be a process the implementation of, of that. Yes. Okay. The Court of Appeal said it is just safe to secure it. And it was a three judge bench and said that uh, they can continue to serve until an opportunity comes for that to be complied with. So there's was, there was that, that bit of suspension of implementation. Mm. Uh, so there was no withdrawal. Former Senator Isaac Mora is saying that they are convinced. He's asking, how can you say that of 41 SESs of Uhuru were okay, but it's not okay to have 50 of William Ruto? I mean, that's totally missing the point because that's not what the, the, the courts have said. It is clear what the court said. In Justice Miranda's case, it is clear on what the Court of Appeal said. And also we know the procedure that, you know, when you have multiple judges on a bench, yes. it's the majority vote that exactly. carries the day. So exactly. even if we've had dissenting opinions at the Supreme Court right. um, and at the High Court and Appeals Court uh, as well. So it is common practice to see judges having their own judgments uh, separately, but they then take a vote on the majority, which is what happened at the High Court with this e case. Exactly. And it has happened in, yeah. even in the previous yeah. uh, Supreme Court petitions, yeah. even in the presidential election. election. Mm. Uh, and so if you listen to Advocate Josh Mangi with his dissenting opinion, if I'm allowed to use, <laughs> to use that, um, you have two advisors of the president. Mm. There is the Attorney General, and there's another one called Kennedy Ogeto. Mm -hmm. He was the Solicitor, solicitor General, General yeah. when Paul Kihara Karaoke was the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. And they are the people who are appealing against that particular decision. I would be surprised if they didn't give advice on this particular matter of CAS. And I would be very interested to read what advisory they gave. But now the Office of the Attorney General has appealed against that decision. Mm. On to the question of uh, strangers in cabinet and President uh, Eric Theory of the Law Society of Kenya was saying that there was actually advisory. I would also not be surprised to hear that actually there was advisory. What as, the, as there should. Yes, exactly, yeah. because the president is not a lawyer and he has hired, hired or appointed all these people to advise him before making decisions. And so it is going to be very interesting if ever we uh, come to learn what that ad advisory was, uh, but that the petition has been filed. I think it's Charles Mugane who has filed that petition. Mm. 
we have to wait and see what sort of proceedings there will be. Because obviously, when you look at the decision of Justice Anton Morima, which he reflected on uh, last week, uh, coincidentally, it's the same judge yes. uh, who said that General Mohamed Badi cannot sit in cabinet mm. because he is a stranger. Mm -hmm. Then, I mean, the facts and the circumstances are almost the same that you're having uh, these three advisors and um, the Secretary General of UDA, Clefas Malala, sitting in cabinet. So. Let's wait and see. In the case filed by uh, lawyer uh, Charles, Charles Mugane, yeah. um, the, the High Court, that's uh, Justice Lawrence Mugambi, has directed the AG, Justin Muturi, to file his response in this case. And the case is supposed to be mentioned on September 20th now for further direction. So it's back again um, to the AG now to, yeah. to give direction. Yeah, you know. Just a quick one on, yes. the, on, the, on, on advice. Yeah. You see, advice is not binding. Mm. Uh, the president receives. Hmm all manner of advice mm -hmm. uh, at all times from experts, from uh, just people who access him yeah. and, and those who are around him. And even from uh, informal advisors, people who have absolutely no... Um, official role or no title official, as advisor, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but this advice is up, it's upon the president to act or not to act on it. So it's not, there's no way of legally mm. uh, enforcing. So even if we established whether Theuri's um, um, assertion was correct and whether uh, Attorney General Justin Muturi actually uh, had a written advisory, mm -hmm. as long as we don't have the document, yeah. um, it, it's really the president who decides uh, how to go. But again, uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, People, especially politicians, try the law, you know, push it and see mm -hmm. what, what it can give. It's a fishing expedition. Just throw in something and, and see what you can, what you can catch. In, uh, I mean, some of them and, and, and journalists deal with politicians at all times. You, they'll tell you, you know, we were just trying uh, to, to see. <laughs> and, you know, they know it's, it, 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 it's senseless. It doesn't make legal sense, but <laughs> no, no give, it, give it a try. I mean, yeah. it doesn't hurt. Uh, there'll be a judge to listen, maybe a bench of three, yeah. a bench of five, and there'll be a decision. And which and, I guess um, is... you won't lose your your, your arms. <laughs> Which I guess is also the role of the courts, anyway, to interpret uh, the law and the constitution. Want to take a break, Sam, quickly? Y yes, there's um, a senator who is also a lawyer, not yet an advocate, but has been speaking about uh, w w what is going on and having a bit of insults to the judiciary. I mean, the judiciary is established by the constitution. It is free to make its decisions. It has made a decision. You don't agree with it, you appeal. Mm. Uh, the other thing is, now, I feel sorry, especially for the 50 CSs who had already been sworn in um, and almost um, marking their, uh, how many months, three months since mm -hmm. the appointment. So where do they go from here? Uh, for the president, I think this is uh, quite, a, quite a task. Uh, does he tell them, okay, wait for the appeal at the Court of Appeal, or does he tell them, okay, in the meantime, there's something that you can do. Um, I know there are still ambassadorial positions that are yet to be filled. A lot of interest, but also remember that um, the statement was that they want professionals to occupy these positions. So now that things are the way they are, does the president hold on because still he's um, being served by the ambassadors that are appointed by President Kenyatta? Does he wait or does he now say, okay, some of these politicians who had also been made CSs yeah. are going to be sent to different missions? So does he say, I stick to the plan? The professionals are the ones that you represent the government of Kenya mm. in those foreign missions. Yeah, but you uh, know... I think uh, one thing is, is, yeah, yeah. One, one thing is just really final on, uh -huh. uh, in as far as their fate is concerned. From the legal point of view, the judges were careful enough to be very uh, procedural in, in terms of what happens first. First, they declared the position unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. So that one is gone. And then they expressed their awareness of that swearing in of some 51, uh, uh, of, of some 50, 50 yeah. uh, uh, and the Gazette people notice, into, yes. the, into the office. So what they did is to also quash yeah. that notice yeah. and make it Okay, uh, null and, and, and void com mm. completely. So as at now, um, the, the, the 50 uh, CSs have nothing they are holding on to legally except the hope of a successful appeal. appeal. Yeah, and look, 
We are talking about the legal stuff, and you've just said something about, you know, what do you do? How do you reward, um, you know, political loyalty, as it were? There is something that the issue of strangers in cabinet has has raised, and that is, you know, multiple positions that we are seeing even now. But I want us to take a break and come back and talk about that. We also want to talk about uh, logging and trees and that sort of thing, but not before we wrap up this issue of. Hang on a second. There's, you know, there's all of these positions. Who's doing what? Because what Sam Gituku has raised about about, you know, just trying to, to make all your loyalists happy and then you create all of these positions and then, you know, it becomes a little grey who does what, be it CASs, be it strangers in cabinet, we'll come back and just talk a little bit about that and uh, maybe see what's happening uh, with the structure of government. Are there too many people doing the same thing? Back when we return.